Hey there, if you're watching this video, you're probably racing mini four-wheel drive for a while already. Or, you're probably a beginner, you're going back to the hobby, and you're still losing. You're probably racing box stock, tune class, or some Mio open class. But everybody's smoking you. You're stable in the track? What seems to be the problem? Wrong motor of choice? Your setup? Your braking method? Your batteries? Or, you must be not charging your battery right. What's up guys, it's your boy Shellshock from CTUSA Mini 4-Wheel Drive Racing Squad and I'm a teacher here in New Works and today we're going to talk about everything you need to know about Mini 4-Wheel Drive battery chargers. So hi guys, as I mentioned earlier, we are going to talk about mini four-wheel drive chargers. So as you can see, those are my chargers throughout my mini four-wheel drive journey. So I started from wall charger and then gradually upgrade myself into lacrosse and other smart chargers. So we're going to talk about mini four-wheel drive chargers because mini four-wheel drive chargers are very important. Um, without this, you can't use your rechargeable batteries, obviously, because you have to recharge your battery and it saves you a ton of money instead of using alkaline batteries because most of racing centers allows you to use nickel metal hydride batteries and nickel cadmium batteries, not just alkaline. So it's really good to invest one that is a really good one and I'm here to help you if you're looking for a good mini four-wheel drive charger. Hey guys, so before I continue the video, I want to say shout out to Band Royalty, my teammates, and my team. If you guys are interested with Band Royalty Apparel, Print Nation, and Game Buzz, I have the link at the description below. And also, if you guys are into 90s theme clothing and streetwear, young clothing, I have the link at the description below. And also, I want to say shout out to High Speed Matrix Cleaner and High Speed Matrix Oil. If you guys are interested with this high speed matrix power cleaner i have a video about it and also about this high speed racing oil i have the video about it i will put the link in the description below all right so let's continue the video uh, as i've said earlier we are going to talk about mini four-wheel drive chargers so as you can see earlier uh those are my chargers as my mini four-wheel drive journey goes i gradually up upgraded my chargers as time goes by of racing and you know how chargers are very important because um, it's one good factor um, when you're racing mini four-wheel drive. And it's a good, it's a huge difference if you have a good charger and it will take care of your batteries. It will also um, give you higher performance if you have the right charger to use throughout your mini four-wheel drive journey. So... They'll give you a situation, uh, let's say you're racing, and especially if you're racing tune class, tune class motors, even though you break it properly and you push it to its limit, uh, tune class speed, top speed, and torque are not far from each other. So even you do it properly and you already have the fastest motor, you will not be not too far ahead from other tune class motors or tune class builds unless their cars are extremely heavy compared to yours and some people are wondering why is that um we have all the same weight the same settings and everything and they're faster and they have the same random batteries and such so it must be how you use your chargers or what kind of chargers you are using so let's talk about two ways of charging there's like two ways of charging right there's this parallel charging and individual charging so let's talk about the first one the parallel charging all right so parallel charging is charging the batteries that allows to charge more than one battery at the same time so it's basically a parallel circuit if you guys study it in an elementary school or high school um parallel circuit is like it's like a one current flow 
through the cells if you're doing a parallel charging. So I will give you a, big, a good example of a parallel charging right here. So I have this ICE Duratrax RC charger over here. Um, and it's an RC charger and it's a balanced charger. And also it does charge multiple chargers at the same time. For example, I have this battery tray that I have four slots of battery. So what I do is I just um, plug this to the whatever side, I mean, a polarity you they're supposed to be. And then you put four batteries here, all right? The advantage of this is you can charge more multiple batteries at the same time. So you're, let's say you're racing mini four-wheel drive, especially um, those big races that you are allowed to use multiple cars, you can charge batteries or peak batteries or refresh or discharge batteries all at the same time. Same with this uh, wall charger that I have. This wall charger is also a parallel charger battery. It might not seem parallel, but it is. So this charger though is only for two slots. And what it does is you put two batteries here and it will indicate you if the battery is full. The one disadvantage with the parallel charging is let's say one battery is dead, right? Uh, let me grab one battery so I can uh, have a better explanation. So there's like two pairs of battery right here, right? So there's two. If I plug this in, it will lightly yellow, and when it's done, it'll be bright, bright white when it's done. And it's going to tell me that the batteries are full. But if one of the batteries are dead, it will not tell me. So the disadvantage of this is you might have one battery that's already dead, or it's like its resistance is very high that the resistance is not even anymore and the battery might have a huge voltage drop you won't even know all right because what it is a one current flowing through the battery so basically that one battery that is dead just act like a terminal and the the charge of the battery just pass through that same with this balance charger this ice balance charger that i have so let's say you have four batteries right you have four batteries all together in this slot and you're charging this let's say this one battery is not working you will not be able to know because once the three of the batteries are full charge it will this balancer will tell you that it's full charge all right but same function though it will tell you it's full charge it will tell you you can discharge the battery refresh the battery or even uh, delta peak the batteries but we're going to talk about delta peak later so that's one, that's one way of charging batteries. It's called parallel batteries. So one pro of it is you can charge multiple batteries, one shot, big shot. You can use it on different cars, but you will, you will not know, or the charger will not tell you if your batteries is dead or your battery is not working or your battery is malfunctioning, or it's basically just a current running through the charger. All right, and uh, it's just not going to be even charging no matter what you do. All right, so that's one way that's parallel charging. All right, now, so now let's talk about individual charging. So I have a lot of indiv individual chargers over here, but I will show you two. This is a PowerX MC9000, Maha MC9000, and this is a lacrosse BC 700 all right so these are two individual chargers uh, the uh, what I love about individual chargers are they have a lot of features all right also but also they're like parallel chargers that are have a lot of features too but these are my favorite because you can actually go through the screen and actually indicate all the features some chargers are different from each other like this uh lacrosse one have lesser peach feature than power x but that would be a different video to, uh, for um product review but 
individual chargers have a lot of functions like charge, refresh, break in, discharge, analyze, and cycle. Like this PowerX charger over here. And um, some uh, parallel chargers, you have to do it manually. You have to manually discharge your batteries. Like, And um, some of, of them doesn't have that feature. Like the wall charger that I showed you earlier. The um, Sony Cycle Nickel Metallic Hydride Battery Charger. It doesn't have a discharge feature. It only does have a charge feature and it's a parallel charger. It doesn't even pick your batteries. So um, one advantage of this individual chargers is one, this is very high handy. As you can see, this is the biggest one. I mean, I have the MC3000 with me, a bigger version of a charger. But this is a smaller one. These are very handy. And you can actually check each and every status of the charger like how is the charging rate some of them shows you the resistance some show you this and this and that it's just a lot of accurate and safety features for um, individual chargers all right so that's two ways parallel charging and individual charging so now if you guys are gonna ask me about smart chargers and regular chargers smart chargers have a lot of accurate charging and safety charging features versus the regular chargers the cheap ones have default settings you can't really adjust the settings of a regular charger all right so now let's talk about delta peaking all right it's called delta peaking charging and let's talk about the things that you need to know about charging batteries in mini four-wheel drive racing and one important thing is delta peaking so a lot of people are asking me what are delta peaking, um, it's or people call it delta peak charging method or whatever. So I'm gonna show you how that charging method is done. All right. So let's say I have this. Let's see, let's find a full charge batteries, right? So by the way, delta peaking is a method for determining when charger batteries are fully charged. As the charger adds energy to the battery, the voltage, and it generates the voltage as it rises. All right. So as you can see right here. All right. Let's do it again. This too. I have old end loops right here. And you can see it's full, right? And if you look at the display, it's 1.47. And it's charging. Is I can change the charge to 200, 500, and 700. So we're going to push it to 700. And it pushes to 1.48. All right. So as the battery peaks, it will push up to its delta peak, which probably 1.57 if the batteries are in good condition or high resistance. Or you, it depends also on the weather, if it's cold or not. But as you can see, it rises. That's called delta peaking charging, all right? So as you do that, you're also building some crystals and dissipating heat from the battery because you are basically overcharging the battery. So what it does is it pushes the battery to its delta peak or to its limit. So when you remove it before you put it in your car, it's getting hot. So some people use blowers and some people have ice blowers too. I've seen that. It's crazy in the Philippines because it's hot over there. But Delta Peaking, it helps you push more voltage from the battery on your first drop. And it gives you that kick or that booster when you're racing. Especially if you're racing tune class. I love tune class. So I do that. I push my batteries to its limit, which is called delta peaking. Now you can see it's into 1.57. I can probably push it more if I want to. But remember, if you are doing delta peaking, you are ruining your battery's life slowly. But eventually, I'm going to change batteries anyway, so I really don't care that much. But, but people that care much about their battery and, you know, I know batteries are not cheap. So um, be careful of doing this. This is one method that I use during racing. It pushes the battery more. And as you can see, the voltage go higher. See, it's pushing still into 152 right now. And it's probably going to push until 157. So that's 
called Delta Peak. So when it gets its peak, let's say it reaches 157 or 58 or just 55 or it's just 53, the voltage will drop. All right. The voltage will drop because that's not the default um, voltage of this battery. So you're just overcharging the battery. So eventually the battery, the, pa the power or energy from the battery have to go out from the battery or have to have to disperse because that's not the actual capacity of the battery when it comes to its voltage so it can leak if it doesn't if the voltage doesn't drop but that's how you do the delta peaking charging all right all right so it's still um rising over there all right to use delta peak charging the charge rate must be high enough cause the cell to heat slightly at the end of the charge so you can really feel that that hotness from the battery because that's the way it needs to um to dissipate the 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 power or the excess voltage of the battery so don't so don't wonder when your batteries get hot all right again that's delta peaking battery all right, so let's the next thing that we're gonna talk about is um, one important thing is battery resistance. All right, battery resistance. So, battery resistance is a gatekeeper of the battery. The battery, the lower the resistance of the battery, the less restriction the pack encounters. Low resistance delivers current on demand the batteries to stay cool. High resistant current is restricted voltage drop on the load when the battery heats. All right. So let's say battery resistance, right? The lower the battery resistance, the higher, I mean, the lower your delta peak is. All right. So if you have a low resistance, you can't push your battery high. So as you use your battery through a long period of time, your resistance will get higher and higher and your delta peak will get higher and higher. And also as your, your resistance and your delta peak goes higher, your, ba your battery life gets lower, if you got that right. So battery resistance is very important. So what I do is I measure all the battery resistance of the batteries and match them so I know how much capacity or how much voltage I can push on a certain pair of batteries because if you say the resistance of this battery is 70 and this one's 35 its voltage not gonna match and one day one battery is already dead and don't even know because the higher the resistance that means there's a lot of output from that battery but that battery most most likely drop faster the voltage drop will be faster than a regular um or a new battery i mean the new battery will drop voltage slower compared to an actual old high resistance battery so you it's very important to know how much is your battery resistance as you can see, this battery is still peaking to 156 to 155, which is very high. And that means this battery have a high resistance battery. So the voltage drop of this battery is, um, is very quick compared to my other batteries. All right, so why battery resistance is important? Because if you don't know your battery resistance, you, won't me you can't measure how fast your voltage drop, especially you, if you're racing big races, because I know there's a lot of racing centers out there and the racing centers that doesn't allow you to change batteries. Some of them, a lot of them doesn't change you, allow you to change batteries. So if you doesn't know how much resistance you have and you doesn't know how much is the capability of your batteries, and let's say you use this, especially like, for example, this batteries that I'm using, which probably have a high resistance, you won't, I won't even last until the third heat because I didn't know that those batteries have a lot of, you know, voltage drop or 
what you call that it's like self discharge because if you high have high resistance you most likely have the high self discharge so you got to know and you have to pair your batteries all right and i will show you how you figure out your resistance but you have to use a different charger cuz if unfortunately lacrosse bc 700 can determine how you measure your battery resistance all right so i need my sky rc for battery resistance all right so i have my sky rc mc3000 over here and you can see the batteries already drop so that means this battery already peaked and it's dropping and that's called tickle charging all right so we're going to talk about that later but now i'm going to show you how to find out your resistance so i have the mc3000 and i love this charger because this charger is very smart and also bluetooth functional so i can connect it with my smartphone all right we're gonna charge the battery to 0.5 because if you put higher current the resistance will just very high and it will be so close to each other it's not going to be super accurate but this one we gotta check out all right, so we can find out if they actually have even resistance. So what we're going to do is we're going to transfer these two batteries over here. All right. And so you can see it's very accurate. It says 1.52 over here and 1.52 and then right there. See, it even measure your voltage and, you know, wall chargers and power wall chargers don't do that. So um, smart chargers are really good. All right, so let's do this. So our battery is nickel metallic hydride. We're going to switch to end loop right there. Charge's capacity would be 1900. Current charge will be 0 0.5. We're going to switch to 0 0.5 right there. 150. Cut bolt. Well, we don't have to worry about that. All right. So let's do this. Save. There you go. And now we're going to start. All right. So if you have this kind of charger, I highly recommend this. This will start charging. Mode of the chargers. It's taking a little bit forever. Let's see. There you go. Now it's going to start charging. There you go. So you can see it starts charging. And you can monitor the... It tells you it's in a loop. And it's charging. And that's the capacity. It's going up. The voltage is 1.5. The current is 0.5 amps. 18 seconds. Temperature is 25 Celsius and 24 Celsius. I love using Celsius instead of Fahrenheit. Because that's just the way I learn. Let's go to details. All right, so as you can see the details right here, let's see if it will it will show you. There you go. Shows you the type, charge, capacity, temperature, time, voltage, battery resistance right there. Battery resistance. There you go. As you can see, 71 milliohms for the first cell. The second one is 81 milliohms, so it's very high. And you can see there's a chart there too as a charge. That's how it goes up. And that chart also shows you the delta peaking. If you reach that peak, that's why it's called delta peak. There would be a peak there and then it drops once you reach that peak. So that's called delta peak charging. And that's the resistance. It's 81 for the second cell, 71, 71 milliohms and 81 milliohms. All right, so they're actually not far from each other. They're like 10 ohms, so they're not bad. Um, we can also check out our batteries. Let, let's see, I have this too. I just don't know if it's fully charged, but let's use it anyway. And they have 45 and 46 volts. All right, each of them. Let's go back. Let's do it again. And then start charging. All right. So we have four cells charging right now. Let's check the details. All right, nothing changed. 71, 81 with the other one. This one is 55. The other one's 50. So they're also not far from each other. See, 
A 5 million ohms difference is not that too big for me, but 10 is kind of big. So they're actually, they don't match that well. They don't match that well. See? But that's how you find out your uh, battery resistance. So it's very important to know the battery resistance because as I've said on my older videos, the higher the battery resistance, the higher the delta pick the higher the voltage drop. The lower your resistance, the lower your delta peak, but the lower the voltage drop. So you have to pick, because there's no such thing as perfect battery, so you have to pick what kind of method or way you're going to charge your battery or what kind of batteries you're going to use during a certain type of racing situation. But for me, in my opinion, if you're racing and you're, tuning class and you have to push your batteries all the time i would rather pick my batteries all the time and i would use a high resistance battery because it will only take three laps and before i reach my voltage drop i already finished the line or i'm already done with the race and if you are racing high big race that you know like in the philippines they will take two days a day or two racing and they actually impound the car and they don't allow you to recharge your battery or change your batteries that you have to take care of batteries and make sure you have the lower resistance batteries so there will be lesser voltage drop. All right, so that's battery resistance for you. And this resistance doesn't go up anymore, so they're pretty stable. All right, that's battery resistance for you, so we're going to move on. All right, so now let's talk about trickle charging. So what's trickle charging? Trickle charging means... Charging a fully charged battery at the rate of the equal to its self-discharge rate, thus enabling the battery to remain at its fully charged level. All right, so this happens when the battery is actually not loaded. All right, so I'm going to show you how trickle charging works. So I have um, PowerX um, MC, MH9C9000, and this is one of my first um smart chargers it does have the charge refresh break in discharge cycle method but this have a default um trickle charge um function or feature all right so i'm gonna show you how all right so this batteries that we were charging earlier especially this two with my sky rc they are getting pushed or delta peak to 54 1.54 153 voltage now this charger allows this battery to peak, all right? Even though it's getting really hot right now, it's uh, letting this battery to peak because this charger doesn't have a default trickle charge function. This one does. So trickle charge is like a safety feature for the car not to leak, not to be super hard or explode, or else the battery will be just ruined because it's going to be super hot and it, there will be oxidation inside a battery and it will be all crystallized. All right, so let me show you how it works in this charger. So now it's 1.54, 153. All right, so it's actually peaking right now. We're going to remove this. You can see connection break. So I really love smart chargers because it tells you what you do. And we're going to charge this battery at the same rate that we were using on that sky rc so we're gonna charge it you can see how much milliampers you want to push we're gonna do 0.5 like we did with the other one so charge 500 which is 0.50 right there 0.5 and now it's charging progress so you can see that's the minutes that's the voltage so it's pushing to 1.71 and then says a milliampere capacity and then the other one's 1 1.52 volts all right so it's charging right now it's charging what it does is because it does have a trickle charge default see it's done already so it will stop the charging right away before the batteries gets hot and gets pushed and to reach its delta peak so as you can see it's done because it's over to its peak already and it will not even push the battery even more that's why it's done. As you can see, it's 151. Because if the battery exceeds to 151, like on the other charger, the battery, um, the, the batteries will be super hot. 
So trickle trickle charging is basically a safety mode. It's basically 70 or 80% of the capacity of the battery for the voltage. So it won't push it right away. And also it drops the voltage. You can see it's dropping because it's a safety mode. It's 1.5 now. I'm pretty sure it's going to drop to 1.48. Because once this charger push this battery to 1.48, you're not going up anymore once it's done. Because that's that's how trickle char trickle charging works. We're gonna do it one more time. As you can see, this is 1.53 already, right? 1.54. We're gonna do a different battery. I have this old Neo Champs right here. We are go actually gonna push it to a higher amp. We can push it to 900. Let's push it to 900 because that's actually the capacity of the battery. So let's see what it will be the voltage, uh, what will be the result for the final voltage when it trickle charge. So trickle charge is very important. Some people doesn't like it because they said it doesn't push the battery to its limit. But as I've said earlier, if you are racing in a racing center that doesn't allow you to change batteries this charger is very helpful for taking care of your battery because one it will not overheat so the battery will not be hot it will not it, it will prolong the life of your batteries it will prolong that means it's i'm not telling you the battery is not going to be dead or it's not going to die in period of time it's going to prolong its life and also um the resistance will of the battery will be taken care of so the battery the battery resistance will not go high as fast as other batteries using um other chargers you know because this will take care of the battery so it will not actually be overcharged so the battery life will be good and if you're as i've said earlier and i'm repeating it if you're racing to a place that will not let you change the batteries your batteries will last longer during the race because there will be lesser voltage drop. All right. So, as you can see, let's check the slot. Slot one. Let's see if it still continues dropping because of the trickle charge. See, it's 1.48. So, it's a safe mode that takes care of your battery for overheating or ruining your battery. So, that's one thing that also you need to remember. One more thing with trickle charging, um, it's uh, it depends on the chargers too. How you can use trickle charging. Obviously, um, this charger MC, uh, this uh, BC seven hundred lacrosse doesn't have that feature, but it will also voltage drop once it reached that one point fifty four. So that will probably delta peak, and it will drop. It will also trickle charge. But its default setting is not like the MC3000 that will not even, I mean, uh, the MHC9000 that will not even let you push your battery more once you reach that, that danger zone or that peak zone that the battery will overheat. But MC3, uh, the, the uh, what do you call this? The BC700 will let you do that. So I love this chargers too, especially if I'm racing box down. I'll push that battery like crazy really quick. And then once I see it's 1458, I'll take it off right away because it takes a little while for the battery to recognize that it's overheating. So it takes a little bit of time before it trickle charge because the settings of these two batteries, I mean, these chargers are different. So you can also do that in parallel charging, obviously, with this charger. I just I've said it's also in parallel, but it's different method. And you can't use obviously you can't use it on a wall charger because this is not a smart charger. You can't even analyze how much voltage or how much capacity you have in there. Alright. So um in um Sky RC, by the way. If you check the settings right here, as I edit the settings, you can actually have a cut vault. You can actually customize the cut vault. You can actually put the delta peak, how much delta peak you want. The trickle charge right there, it's off right now. But you can see that's the M, 
a that you are allowed to use in trickle charge or you can actually turn it off at the sky rc and you can actually set it you can set the trickle charging settings so that's why i love sky rc mc3000 it's a little bit pricey but it gets the job done and it's very good. You can also have a restart voltage over there. And it also cuts the temperature and cut the time if you're actually going to sleep on it or whatever. So there's a lot of functions with this smart MC3000 charger. All right. So the PowerX is already done. The MC3000 is already done. And so you can see, let's go to the slot 3. It didn't even go up. It's charged, it was charged by 4 minutes and 1.45. It didn't even go up to 1.5. And then the third one, the fourth one, I mean, is, let's see, 1.45 also. So it's pretty accurate. The batteries are not even hot, and then the batteries are full charge. All right? So that's some um, trickle charging. All right, so let's talk about the pros and cons with all these chargers that I feature. All right, let's talk about parallel charging first. The parallel charging pros, you can charge the battery all at the same time. One shot, big shot. It will save you a lot of time. Um, and you, it's also um, going to be good for big races because you can use multiple cars. All right. One con uh, the cons of it is RC chargers, balance chargers are usually bulky and heavy. And you also have to use a power supply like this. See, I have a power supply that is really huge. All right. You gotta use a power supply like that. And also, some of it doesn't have like a settings like this parallel charger over here. It's not even smart charger and it you can't monitor all this stuff. So that's one cons of it. All right, and versus the smart chargers, there's three different kinds of smart chargers. One pro is they're smaller, they're handy, but there's a lot of features that you can actually use for racing. Charge, refresh, analyze, break in, discharge, voltage cut, volt, capacity, delta peak, trickle charging, restart, cut temperature, and cut time. There's a lot of options with these smart chargers. There are bulky ones, like this guy RC3000. That's one disadvantage, but the pros of it is there's a lot of stuff that you can do. But one cons, all right? Cons is you can't, obviously you can't charge a lot of batteries unless you have a lot of these. So as you can see, I have a lot of chargers. So that's one cons. You can't really charge all the batteries one shot, big shot, unless you have a lot of battery slots compared to parallel that you have to have just, let's say you have a huge battery tray consists of 18 batteries or 20. You can charge them all the same time. And individual chargers like this smart chargers, no, because there are charging individually. And also, one disadvantage of it, and it's more of a mistake of the racer, a lot of racers are tempted to push their batteries or delta pick their batteries more. And that shortens the life of the battery because they are so eager to push their batteries to 1.58 to 57. I'm guilty. I'm guilty on that one. I'm not denying myself that I don't do that because it's so tempting that you just have to give more juice or a more voltage to the battery as you race you just want to have that you know that power on your motors but i'm not saying that's the perfect way but that's also one cons or disadvantage of using this are people tend to push their batteries and it will bite them in the ass in the end it breaks the battery and it shortens the lives of the battery in the end all right so next time you go to the hobby shop or you go to an electrical store and you're racing mini you're a mini four-wheel drive racer hopefully this video helps you which charger are you gonna buy or what charging method you're gonna use i just tackled all that for you to help on your mini four-wheel drive journey how what charging method is important and how are you gonna do it and my next video was probably going to feature all this different kind of chargers that I use. I'm going to make a review. Again, this is Shell Shop from CTUSA Mini 4 Drive Racing Squad, and I'm a teacher here in Noob Works. Don't forget to hit like 
and subscribe. And if you don't like this video, hit this like. Also, you can leave your comments, what suggestions you can say throughout your mini four wheel drive journey. Or also, maybe you can suggest um, other chargers that I didn't mention. We are open. We're pretty open to that. Again, as I've said, we learn from you, you learn from us. This is Shell Shock. Always race humble. Peace.